Welcome to the Bioptimizer's awesome health podcast. And now here's your host, Wade T. Lightheart. Want awesome health? How about doubling your energy? With our free awesome health course, you can get a new video and lesson every single day for 84 straight days. The course covers everything from optimizing your digestion, nutrient intake, correct health issues, including weight, skin, energy, immune system, and so much more. The course could easily be worth two or $300 for, and yet it's 100% free when you go to bioptimizer.com. That's B-I-O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E-R-S. Dot com. Once you're there, just enter your name and email to get the first three phases of the bioptimization report. You'll get the report immediately and begin getting your video lessons each and every day from there on in. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It's Wei T. Lightheart from Bioptimizers with a, another edition of the Awesome Health Podcast. And today we're going to talk about the brain balance connection and how improving the number one balance nerve in your foot can prevent falls in older adults based on neural balance therapy. Now, today's guest has been a longtime friend of Bioptimizers, Chris Wilson, who is a longtime, lifelong fitness and health advocate with nearly 25 years of experience in the fitness industry. Chris has worked alongside and learned from leaders in the industry, such as the legendary Charles Poliquin. Mentor and friend, Brent, excuse me, Ben Prentice, three-time world champion powerlift, Lloyd Weinstein, four-time Olympia, Mr. Olympia, that is, Jay Cutler, IFBB pro, Darren Charles, Ben Picalsi, holy cow, John Hansen, big Aaron Reed, and of course, his lifelong friend and owner of Critical Bench. Mike Westerdahl. This is a who's who list, guys. This is a strength coach and a VP of content at Critical Bench Publishing. He's also a certified personal trainer, specialist in sports nutrition, certified balance and stability instructor, and a certified kettlebell instructor. I'm really tripping over my words today. Chris oversees the Strong by Design podcast show, as well as Critical Bench YouTube channels with 1 million subscribers and over 4,000 videos. He resides in Clearwater, Florida, and has and his wife of 15 years, Samantha, and their beautiful kids, Callan and Cameron. His passion outside of work, he loves Lord College and pro football coaching, youth, baseball, dogs and cats, traveling with the family, Family game time, movie night, and listening to podcasts, audiobooks, and loud music while driving on to work. Dude, you are living the true American dream. Dream. I mean, I'm yes. like, and that's I a have- great sounding lifestyle. <laughs> You're hanging out with the who's who of the industry. You're figuring out cool things. You, 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 you know, you're, you're the guy that helps people. Uh, improve the improve their lives when they get the question, how much do you bench? And you got a great family and you're contributing to your community. Seems like you got it figured out, dude. Yeah, well, I'm fumbling my way. 46 years of, uh, of, of making you know, mistakes and failures. You learn a few things, you know? This is, a, first off, it's great to see you again. It's been a while since we had our last chat. I've been on your show and stuff and we've connected a few times here and there. I think this is a big issue you're talking about. Um, there's so much information and research going into healthy aging, degenerative cognitive conditions. We've got a sedentary uh, population that's eating bad food, that's screwing themselves all up. And, you know, the number one thing, and Matt, my business partner talks about this, so like his grandfather um, who was fairly robust in his health of his old, took a bad fall and busted his hip up really bad, it could never really walk a same and just went through this complete cascade for the rest of his life. And it's very common for people to do this. What is the research? Like, like how did you get to this research by adjusting something in your foot or this nerve relationship that, that can change how you manage balance? Well, you know, there's no research quite like experience. Oh, thank you. Right? Thank you. I know. Um, 
honestly, this, this program was really derived from my passion for helping the men and women in the older community, older adults, people 55 plus. Mm -hmm. And that was really my wheelhouse, my expertise. Um, I would say, I guess, early in my training career, when I was exposed to some really high level, amazing people, some of the names that you listed uh, there in the introduction, um, those are some really high achieving, uh, exceptionally talented, right? I mean, Charles Poliquin, right? I mean, I, I, I was in a room with this guy for days on end, weeks on end, as he was forming a very strong connection and relationship with Ben Prentice, who was doing amazing things with, uh, with Prentice Hockey and Performance up in, in New England. I worked for Ben's business, his original business, Body Tuning and was exposed to people like the Charles Poliquins, right? I was around a world-class power lifter and, and Lloyd Weinstein and learning like what it looked like to really move well with weight and, and, uh, and be strong doing it. And my passion, you know, in those like formative years was just, to, I loved the gym. I loved being strong. I loved being a guy. I loved all of that that went into it and just being able to move athletically. But what I found was I was able to use that enthusiasm that I had for my, my own training and pass it on to people that were in that a different stage of life. People that were, uh, you know, ex uh, experiencing different types of neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy, which is really just nerve related damage to your limbs, your, your arms, your legs, having numbness, having pain, having performance issues. Um, I, was, I was working with people that were post-stroke who had some paralysis. And I mean, I, th th this is where I really feel like this kind of experience and this commitment to other people is why I'm still doing the work I'm doing today is all these great face-to-face -face intimate relationships that I formed, people I genuinely cared about, people I spent hours with a week. We would do life together. They would take me out to dinner and stuff. I mean, these people were, saw me almost as like a grandson, right? Or, you know, uh, and so we had very strong bonds and I wanted to see them live their life. So that's the roots of the program that I created was really to help people live a better, longer, fuller, safer life. And it all comes down to how we move. And if we're not moving well in life, life isn't moving us very well. So well illustrated. I want to touch on something that you uh, put forth because you know, Matt and myself both started out as personal trainers and you have those one-on-one -on -one, uh, intimate relationships. And what was interesting, and I'm going to get to the researcher, but I think this is really important for people to listen to about who find or founds companies and what is the motivation and drive for innovation. Innovation is a part of every great breakthrough. But I think a lot of people mistake innovation as some sort of nefarious group of people trying to form up an angle on how to hook people into something. But I believe that true innovation comes out of, uh, of a passion and out of a love for the individuals. And so when you talk about the people that you've hung around with at those highest levels, all of those have... Um, operated in a highly functional personal coaching relationship with somebody or multiple people, both sometimes as the student and also as the advocate or the coach, if you will. And one of the things that I had suggested to people in the past is I said, you know, a coaching relationship is one of the purest relationships on planet earth in that Someone exposes a vulnerability and a trust to the coach to say, hey, I want to be able to do X and I'm entrusting you to push me 
or to direct me or to, or to, to, to subject me to whatever you need to subject me for to get me over what I cannot do on myself. And the coach is like, says, no, I see that you can do this. And I'm committed to find a way to bring out your best essence. Now, whether that's to a sport or whether that's to functional movement, but in this case, it's out of the love for people. And you see these people's qualities of lives are being disrupted and I've got to figure out how to do it. And you find a way that's noble. That's really powerful. Yeah, no, it is. It absolutely is. I, I always felt, uh, felt, I should say, a very, um, and at that age, I couldn't have uttered it this way. Being much older, I can look back and I know very well those what I was feeling. I, I was feeling great gratitude and, uh, and really just a blessing to be able to, to be in that position, to be working for somebody that I really respected that had enough faith in me as a, a young guy who just really, I, we struck up conversation. And I became a, this is a great way to get a job, by the way, for people out there is like, just treat others like with respect and enthusiasm and positivity. And guess what? Stuff just happens to fall into place for you. I had formed a, a, a friendship uh, with this guy, Ben Prentice, who said, hey, I'm going to be opening up my own facility here uh, in, in the coming months. And I really think you'd be a great fit for my team. And that just kind of opened the doors to a lot of opportunity and learning for me and furthered my passions and, and, ex and exposure to, to what I'm still doing today uh, over 20 years later. And so I just had no, uh, I really didn't have the, uh, the ability to see what, you know, the, the future at that time, right? I just knew, okay, I can make good money and I can, I can kind of, you know, be in the spotlight and, and talk with people and, and it's, you know, give them a little show and, and make it fun for them, make exercise fun and entertaining. Because one thing I did learn as a young person is that you can have all the knowledge and all of the smarts up here, but if you suck, at being a people person and relating to other people and making exercise fun, you are not going to go far in that line of work. So I learned very well, like what I knew what my strength was. My strength really was just being a people person and wearing my, my heart on my sleeve. And people just knew like within the first hour of working with me, whether I was like <laughs> going to be a good fit for him or I, or I was too talkative or too animated or too enthusiastic, which can certainly be the case. Sometimes you're just overbearing, but I wanted people to really know how much I cared uh, for them and for their, uh, their well being, And that really led to, I mean, and that, that's, that was just the start of it. I mean, I went on years later to continue to work even on a part-time level with people face-to-face, -face. again, mostly people who, uh, who had a certain amount of money. So that was typically going to be an older person. And so I just kept getting these clients that were, you know, late forties, fifties, sixties, wanted more activity, wanted to be able to be, uh, to be able to travel, wanted independence, right? Wanted life extension. And how do you, how do you do that? Do you do that just by like grinding people in, into the earth with deadlift squats and bench press all day long? Well, no, that's part of what you're doing with them. But really what you're doing is you're, you're creating programming for them that really makes their day-to-day -day living just better where they can move through life better and safer because whether people know this or not, one in three people over the age of 65 die from a fall. And they might not be in that moment that they die, but the stats are very alarming for people when they fall and go down with great injury, like a broken hip, broken leg, broken shoulder, broke whatever, within one to three years typically of that, that happening, their lives look very different and sometimes they don't make it. Sometimes they don't make it past that three-year mark. It's a big deal. So what are some of the patterns that you're, you're, you're seeing with older people that leads to those falls that 
Um, what are the causes? Are, or is it a natural part of aging? Is it inactivity? Is it neurological? What's going on that's causing this to be such a big issue with so many people? And we all know that mobility is a, a big factor in quality of life. What's going on? What's, what, what have you figured out? Absolutely. Well, moving less, I mean, to, to really go simplistic with it, when we get older, we start to move less. And moving less leads to diminished muscle, right? We start to, like, as you said before, sedentary. We, when we are more sedentary in our lives, we start to lose our muscle, our ability to move our bodies well with muscle, right? So that tissue starts to break down. Our bones weaken. Our connective tissue also gets weaker. And then, so right out of the gate, now you're, you're, you're operating with um, not optimal uh, physical components or reaction speed or time, right? So when, if you do go to fall, when you're older, your ability to stop yourself mm -hmm. is, isn't quite what it was, right? You right. and I walking down the street, if we catch our toe on a sidewalk, we can, you know, 99 out of a hundred times, we're going to catch ourselves and not go yeah. down. Yeah. But when we're older and then all of a sudden it starts to get in here. Right. So it becomes a mental block, right? right. Yeah. I've got to so, be careful. You see the older people much yes. more cautious, especially if they're in an icy place. I mean, right. Right. And then you think, okay, yeah. Environment where, where are they living? Where they're maybe more bound to the home. They're inside more. It's cold out. It's icy out. It's dangerous out. So now they're becoming their home bodies, right? And that, again, that plays into the emotions and the mental side of things, right? It can become very depressing uh, when you get older. If you're not around, uh, you know, loved ones and you're not in, involved in social events. And so there's so many factors that play into this. I have some, listen, I wrote <clears throat> a book about this, you know, in our, in our program. And you know what? I, there's a lot of smart people in the world, much far smarter than I who have been around the block, who have been, uh, you know, 19th and 20th century, like amazing thinkers. And there were, I couldn't help but overlook the, some of the great quotes that I came across from people of, of all different backgrounds. And if you wouldn't mind, I, there was a few things I wanted to read. Yeah. Because I really think what it does is it, it really kind of gets people to, maybe more understand where I'm coming from with this program. So sure. this is from a neuroscientist, Daniel Walpert. This is something that he said. We have a brain for one reason and one reason only. That's to produce adaptable and complex movements. Movement is the only way we have affecting the world around us. I believe that to understand movement is to understand the whole brain. And therefore, it's important to remember when you are studying memory, cognition, sensory processing, they're there for a reason. And that reason is action. Okay, this is from a that's from a neuroscientist. Okay. An, another very famous writer and man of his time was George Bernard Shaw. Mm. And this is a much simple, much more simplistic way of saying very much the same sentiment. We don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. Mm. And that's where I want people to really go. And I've, I've talked about this so much over the years in YouTube content that we've made, all kinds of different stuff that I've been involved in for the last decade plus. Our bodies are designed for one thing, for movement. And there's, there's something that happens right around 20 or in our 20s, where we decide, maybe subconsciously, that moving around like a kid or a child or an athlete, young athlete, is I've outgrown that. That's behind me now. I don't need to do that anymore. Right. And right when we make that decision or start going down that path, life starts to look very different for us. Mm -hmm. um, I You're never- Responsible. Yes. Mature. Yes. I'm going refined, to be mature. I don't need to. Yes. Appropriate. Right. 
I think the best thing we can do as parents, as, as, as young adults in their 20s and 30s, is to find ways, new ways perhaps, of ways to rekindle or maintain the same level of play and movement in our lives in order to keep that brain balance or brain body connection as strong as possible. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, and what I equate it to, think of a super highway connecting two cities, right? What do you want out of that highway system? You want the, the roads to be cleared. You want them to be maintained and well paved, right? You want everything in working order so that traffic can go very effectively and efficiently in both directions. What happens when less people start traveling and less maintenance and, and road work is being done? Potholes form, cracks in the road, eventually weeds and stuff grow. And what happened? Those roadways and those paths are no longer clear and accessible and good to travel on. And so people start avoiding those pathways, don't they? That's right. Body is identical to that in terms of how our muscles and our nerves and all of that stuff work and fire. When we stop firing everything, we stop using things, those things break down, those neural pathways weaken and they aren't quite what they used to be. And that's what leads to aging faster. Uh, and I mean, we've seen older folks who look young and, and still move very well, right? We've all seen the Jack LaLanne types out there. Correct. He, that doesn't need to be an anomaly. That's right. He, he just made a choice that he was going to make exercise and fitness his lifestyle. And he was famous for it. Yeah, I remember him chaining towing 70 boats with chains and shackles towing them while he's swimming in the ocean and like it was right. like just right. crazy stuff it's like well if he can do that and you know um there was paul bragg who was going on these hikes through death valley on no food for three days well kids couldn't keep up to them and they, they were these you know extraordinary uh characteristics of athleticism if you ever watch one of the most inspirational things if you watch the seniors Olympics. Oh, yes. you have like 90 year olds sprinting and throwing javelins and hammers and things like, like, you know, it's like, wait a second, we, we could do more than we think. And I have a lady at my, uh, in my town, I was lucky. I had uh, uh, four centurions on my little street. If you can believe that one of them is still alive. Wow. She's 103 years old. Now she, her foot doesn't work that well and her leg doesn't work that well and she'll fall down occasionally and she doesn't care she she cuts her own wood she crawls and drags herself out by the garden she whatever movement she has she continues to move and she has this wonderful attitude about just being engaged with life in general uh and it's marvelous mm. and i think one of the things that's really important you laid it out here is 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 in a world of inactivity, we've got to find these inspirational sources to, to create a standard from which we compare our own self to. Yeah. Not in a negative way, but as an aspirational. So, well, if Bob can do it or Mary can do it, well, God, maybe I should be able to get off the couch. Right. How do you do that? How do you instill that in people, the possibility, especially if they're coming back from maybe a, a, an injury or... Uh, uh, something that threatened their identity moving from a young person to an old person. Like they, maybe they play a sport and they hurt themselves and they're like, well, I'm getting old. Yes. And maybe I better clock it down or whatever. Like, how do you, how do you move people through that? And now for a Bioptimizer's fixed digestion tip, how to get away with eating sugar. Hey, look, sugar is normally one of the worst things for you. But let's be honest. I mean, we all cheat from time to time. And here's a little trick that will ensure your body benefits from the sugar. Now, before you eat or drink anything sweet, take five to eight capsules of P3OM. The patented stream in the formula devours sugar so fast, it literally doubles in the body every 20 minutes in the presence of sugar. That doesn't mean that you can or you should eat a bunch of sugar or sit around all day doing that. But on the days that you do cheat or you go and go after one of those maybe meals that you wouldn't normally do, this ensures that you get something in your gut that eats the sugar. 
And it's not going to feed the bad guys or spike your blood glucose nearly as much. So to learn more about P3M and its sugar devouring and protein digesting properties and how it can transform your gut and metabolism, go to www.bioptimizers.com. Honestly, the only way to, in my experience to really do that is to start very, very small and to just establish a, a, a pattern of victory for them. Mm. You got to start small. If you're intimidating at all, um, intimidation is a real thing, especially again, as we get old, the world starts getting kind of scary and pretty darn big and moving fast. And if we've gone through, even if we were very active in our younger years, right? But then you fast forward and all of a sudden you wake up one day and you're 70 something and, and you sustained an injury, you know, you just don't see things the same way, right? You don't have the same outlook and perspective that you once had. So when you're working with a, a health expert, a movement expert, some a fitness professional, they, the best thing they can do is to not intimidate, to start small and to build on that and to keep people coming back to get to have the consistency there. And that's really the people I worked with who I, I just, when I think back, I, I can list off, rattle off a list of names right now real quick uh, if I wanted to, of, of people that just I spent years with and I, I mean, we had great moments together, little victories and stuff, things that they couldn't do a year later that they could do again. And these are people, again, who suffered. I mean, I had a, an older gentleman, Paul, and God bless him. He's he's a lot of these people I work with are no longer alive. Uh, he had really bad uh, neuropathy uh, in his both his legs. Neuropathy is really just simply, like I said, a nerve related condition where you just have pain and numbness and you don't experience feeling the same way in a particular part of your body his lower legs were both riddled with neuropathy he wore braces and stuff didn't mean that i wasn't going to work with him the best thing that we could do was simple stuff right but i wanted to make his life i wanted to make him moving around in his own home feel a little bit better feel a little bit safer i wanted him to be able to get up out of bed and go to the bathroom without thinking, Ooh, you know, today's the day I'm going down. Mm -hmm. I wanted him to have some strength in his legs and some confidence and, and, and just to, to know that, you know what, Chris, Chris showed me how to do this. I know I can do it. So, and I wanted him to think about me and, and our sessions together while he wasn't with me and, and it, it, it worked. And I had the same experiences with another gentleman, Mike, and then the same experiences uh, with, with an, another gentleman, Dick, and, and, and this, this guy, he had paralysis of half of his body, but he kept, I worked with him before paralysis, before his stroke. And after his stroke, he kept coming back because it was life-giving the time that we spent together. And he knew there was benefit and that I would, I was looking out for his best interest, but it was starting small and going easy and just building, stacking those little wins on top of each other. Those little mini physical victories. Um, I, I just, it, it's such a, um, an emotional thing for me to think back because oftentimes I think, you know, if, if it wasn't for what I'm doing with these people, what would their life look like? Mm -hmm. Honestly, what would their life look like? And they might be just home all of these hours per week and less likely to go out for dinner because they would feel nervous or, not certain about their movement from their car into the restaurant, you know, and I, I, that's not what I want for people. Um, and so again, that's where this, this whole program, that's where it comes from. It comes from a place of just service to our older community, something that's very gentle that they can do very easily and comfortably in their own home to stimulate this part of their body, which we can obviously get into. I'd love to talk, so let's a talk about this. that for a second. Let's get into that. Um, the program's neurobalance therapy, correct? That's the proper term for that. I'm using the right term. Yeah. 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 What does that mean? And what is the process of what, just let us know what all that's all about. I want, I think this is really important, especially for our younger listeners, because they probably know someone that might 
benefit from this. And for our older listeners to say, hey, you know what, uh, whatever's going on in your life, that doesn't have to be a, a death sentence or a, a life compromisation. There, there are options for you if you know what to do. Yeah, without question. There's anyone listening, regardless of age, this, this can affect your life because we all have someone older that we care about a parent, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, an older sibling, somebody that a neighbor, somebody that's older that could absolutely move more in their life or do something to help facilitate or promote a proper movement. And what I found after diving into research and looking at things and just thinking about my 15 years of working one-on-one with people was that it really came down to stimulating you know, the, the muscles and the nerves of the, of the lower leg into the foot. Our, our feet are our connection to, to the earth, to right. Movement, right? And there's a lot of nerve endings in our feet, a lot, a lot, a lot. Well, there's one particular nerve that we call our number one balance nerve. It starts on the outside of the, uh, of the knee area and goes down and ends between your big toe and your second toe. It's called the deep peroneal nerve. And this particular nerve is associated quite often with something you might have heard of called foot drop or drop foot. It's referred to as both. But it's that people say, okay, have you ever noticed an older person when they're walking, sometimes they have a tendency to not pull their toe back up towards their knee. That's a normal reaction or response that Wade and I will have when we walk. When we walk, our toes pull back automatically without us thinking about it towards our knee they pull upward what happens when we get older and we start to do less to stimulate our lower body and we start to have these nerve related issues the foot will have a tendency to drop to just kind of the toe will just kind of drop towards the ground and what happens when you do that you catch your foot instead of picking up your foot and walking normally you're catching your toe you're dragging your toe and that's going to lead to a slip a trip a fall and when you're older you don't get just bumps and bruises when you fall you get fractures you get breaks you get massive contusions head injury and sometimes something worse and so the the program itself is a very simple easy to do for anybody in pretty much any condition. And I've got some great questions that come into our help desk. I got somebody with a leg amputee. He only has one leg and he's like, will this benefit me? I said, absolutely. But I said, I would, I do want to know more about you. And we had a little conversation. I said, I want you to continue to reach out to me because I want to follow your story a little bit, but it, it really comes down to the first thing that you do I have it right here. The first thing that you do in this program is you use a little spike ball underneath your foot to stimulate and massage the bottom of your foot, preferably barefoot. If you want to have a socked foot, you can do it with a socked foot, but this starts to promote blood flow and stimulation nerve feeling in your foot from your heel to your toe. You got one. I, I step on like I step on these things to kind of activate and it's painful at first, but then yes. you're used to it. Right. Well, the good thing is, yes, you can apply your own amount of pressure. You, you want to do it seated and you could just kind of rest your foot on there and just roll. You know, we have videos in, in, a, in a book that shows you how to how to do it. It's very simplistic and it's really just going by feel rolling your foot for a period of time uh, on the spike ball. And after you do that, you do a short foot exercise. Short foot is simply really just uh, being able to fire the muscles of the bottom of the foot to arch and promote the, uh, the muscles that make your arch bigger, right? So it's like pulling the balls of not so much the toes, but the balls of the feet towards the heel and arching the foot upward and holding that position for a period of seconds. And then there's eight simplistic movements that you do after that as a flow. And then there's three levels to the program. So there's a level one, you can progress to a level two and a level three. They're all, it's, it's, it's a progressive program, right? So it's, they're all built off of each other. So once you can do all of level one, 
quite easily or uh, feeling confident you can progress to level two, level three. And again, it's, it's really, it's, I wouldn't even call it exercise as much as I would just call it movement patterns. Mm -hmm. And these movement patterns, when done regularly, consistently, will help fire that connection, right, between the brain and the muscles and nerve endings in the lower part of the body and get that conversation going again. All right. And that's, that's really what it's all about. It's, it's, it's creating a stronger relationship between those things. So I have a question for you that I think is relevant. So um, one of my friends is a wonderful guy by the name of Paul Check, And I go out. I've heard of Paul, of course. Yes. Yeah. And he, he um, is either barefoot or he's wearing the, like those Vibram sneakers with all the toes things. And I go down there and we, we, I walk around barefoot and we lift rocks together and we do, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. What impact do you think the wearing of shoes and all the different shoe industries and all this sort of stuff is impacting people's awareness around their feet and how that could be affecting our brain? What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, massively affecting it because we go through life masking our connection to the ground. Uh, most people wear a heavy shoe or sneaker, you know, 90 plus percent of the day. How often are they doing anything in bare feet other than maybe just a few moments in the morning and in, in the evening? And so absolutely, this program is all about getting barefoot again and doing some, some really smart and simple movement barefoot or a socked foot, of course, um, which again is about as close to barefoot as you can get. A sock isn't going to take too much feeling and sensation away. Uh, but yes, the, 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 the thick cakey soles that we have in our footwear, right? I mean, that's an inch plus of rubber between my foot and the ground. So what's that, what's that like? That's like operating with gloves on, right? How many people like to do anything when it's cold out and they put gloves on? Can you do anything with gloves on other than just keep your hands warm? No. You can't, right? <laughs> well, Nothing but, any, with any level of dexterity. Right, no dexterity. Your dexterity is lost. So the same thing's happening with our feet. And I, I realize so with some of us, there, you know, people have foot issues. I, I get it. I, I'm, I've dealt with my own bouts with plantar fasciitis. I've, I had something I didn't even know much about called Morton's aroma. Look it up. It's, a, it's inflammation of a nerve between the second and third or third and fourth toe. And it's on the balls of the feet. And it's very painful. And you get burning sensations and all kinds of weird stuff. Your feet change as you get older. So uh, there's no doubt about that. I, I think people's feet get wider, they get longer, all kinds of weird stuff happens because our, our arch changes, right? And so our, we have to kind of be responsive to that. We have to be mindful of it. But I think really where it starts, as I said, is just find your moments where you can do things barefoot more. And that's what this program pr- promotes. It's just very simplistic, easy barefoot activity. Something as simple, I'm fortunate, I'm in Florida, going to the beach is one of my pastimes. I love walking on the sand on the beach in bare feet. It feels good. It's great for strengthening the ankle and the lower, the calf and stuff like that. Um, And it works balance. It works all kinds of things. I mean, that's a real simple, fun, leisurely activity, right? That I'm capable of doing down here that promotes wellness um, and and, and, and proper movement. I I agree. I agree. I'm right here in Venice Beach, and I, I go walking on the beach. Now, do you, will you vacation? You don't live, do you live in Venice? Yeah, I live in Venice. Well, what the heck? We're, we're only like a, 60 miles apart. Venice oh, Beach, please. California. You're oh, in- Venice Beach, California. I'm thinking Venice Beach. We have a Venice Beach in Florida. I'm like, wait a second. You're not down here in Florida. Okay, all right. Florida. Gotcha. Not, not, not yet. Not yet. Well, you got to, yeah, you got to get out here. No, um, this is a really good point. And it's something that I've noticed that the highest levels of uh, people in the performance side of things pay a lot of attention of getting their feet on the ground. Yoga practitioners, Tai Chi, martial artists, 
functional strength trainers, athletic, athletic people, gymnasts, all of the people that rely on high levels of coordination, balance, and athletic skill all talk about getting their feet on the ground. Um, and it's, it's in our language, you know, he's got his feet on the ground. In other words, right. they're stable, they're solid. There's a, there is actually a neural association built within our language. So I wanna get people like, okay, cool. What are some of the telltale signs that you're maybe heading towards a problem with your balance uh, that's starting to emerge? What are some of the signs that people start to pick up um, that would indicate, hey, you know what? You're a few years away from potential problems. Yeah. I mean, one thing that immediately comes to my mind is people's response or reaction to climbing stairs. Um, and in Florida, there's most homes, I say most, a lot of homes don't have stairs, just the nature of homes uh, designed. Seven have. years life expectancy difference if you have stairs. See? Big, right? Seven years. I mean, that's Big. almost a tenth of your expectation of life. Yes, that's a big deal, right? People start to look at stairs differently because they feel the need to really hold on or cling to a railing. When we're younger, right? You and I, we go out, we can run stairs yep. for exercise. We're not thinking about holding on to anything. It's just, it's fun to go up and down stairs. When you hit a certain point, whatever that is for someone, it could be in their 50s, could be 60s, it could be beyond that. If they're really feeling like, Wow, I, I really, in order to do this and feel good about it, I want to hold on to something. When you start to have those moments, that's when you got to start doing extra work in your life to promote balance, better balance, better connection, uh, more and build that confidence back up. Um, what would be something else? I would say if you're just feeling like you're stumbling or catching yourself when you move from one surface to another. And most of us in a particular home or environment that we move and function in regularly work, uh, if we move from tile to carpeting, carpeting the hardwood, whatever it is, if we're feeling that change, that difference, or we're mindful of it, or we're feeling like we're sometimes catching our, our feet on on something or noticing that we're our movement isn't quite what it was going from one to the other uh, that's that would be another tail sign uh that maybe may, maybe i need to start focusing on this a little bit um and lastly of course the most obvious right if you find for some reason that you are tri tripping up on things just walking down the down the street, down the sidewalk, you're just, you're, you're stumbling a little bit more. Um, and you, you're, or you're feeling like sometimes people, sometimes it starts up here, right? They start to get uh, different types of issues like vertigo happening. Um, that That's obviously a kind of a side thing. The guy I actually worked with, Paul, he had both neuropathy and vertigo <laughs> so he had two things working against him but you know things change the fluid in your ear canals things can change as we get older and our our ability to to feel balanced just standing still uh if you're noticing that if if i mean a really easy test for people a real simplistic one is just to stand still without anything around you and just close your eyes if you're feeling like you're moving around, right, or that you're struggling just to stand tall with your eyes closed, you, that could be a predecessor to something more uh, uh, coming down the line. Because your proprioception, your spatial awareness, your, your ability to feel balanced doing nothing but just standing with taking away your vision that could be a, a definitely a, a precursor to something more severe. So what are some of the things that um, people notice when they engage in your program? What are some of the benefits they start to experience? They say, you know, uh, and who typically is your clients? Yeah, so again, my clients are typically gonna be somebody, I would say over the age of 50, that would be on the young side. Cause I, I mean, heck I'm 46, so I don't even like to 
think of myself in this category at all. But I would say people certainly in that 60, 65 uh, area, uh, people who are finding that they are not nearly as mobile as they once were. They might have, maybe they used to go for walks all the time. They used to go for bike rides. They used to go play tennis with their spouse or their neighbor, and they're not doing that as much anymore. Uh, they would be really good candidates for programming this. People that live alone of a certain age. Mm. Um, I really, I'm a huge advocate for people having independence and not feeling stuck and not feeling secluded. And if you're not moving well and you're living alone and you are now fearful of leaving your own home or moving around on your own property, I mean, that's a huge eye opener for like the need for something like as simple as this. And again, this is, this takes minutes to do, and this is not real exercise, so to speak, mm -hmm. as you and I, Wade, would classify exercise. This is being in one very con small confined area, either seated or standing, and just doing very simplistic movements um, that help to uh, better engage and stimulate these neural pathways. So I, I really feel like this obviously is a, now if you're somebody that's 65, 70 years old, and you're out all the time walking your neighborhood hand in hand with your spouse or, or going out with your friends and you play doubles tennis at the YMCA and you're going out and you're playing bocce and you're doing, you probably have no need for this program. Okay. Because you, the way you live your life, your lifestyle is dictating your ability mm -hmm. to move well in life and to feel very, very much, very balanced. I'm really kind of talking to the, the, probably a little bit more on the sedentary side of things or people who are experiencing actual nerve related issues, neuropathies of some kind. And that can sometimes start in the hands and the wrists, mm -hmm. not so much in the feet. So if you're starting to feel numbness, uh, numbness tingling, weakness, uh, pain in your hands, that could, again, that could be a precursor to other peripheral neuropathies that are, that are on their way. That could be showing up in your feet within a period of years. Anything else in the program that we haven't covered that you'd like to kind of share with our listeners? Well, the mission of the program, as I said, is to make very clear that daily movement and the right kinds of movement are imperative to the quality of your life. And when we stop moving, we turn off a lot of systems of our body. And we start to, obviously, as I said, at the start of our conversation, we start to, we, we start to get weak and we start to break down, okay? Our, our bone, our muscle, our connective tissue. And when that start ha starts happening, that can be a really hard recovery process. Very hard to, to, atro to have atrophy and to build back. It's much easier to be at a, a decent place and maintain. And so that's what I'm, I, I would really want people to take away. It's like, if you have somebody that's, you know, in their sixties or whatever, and they're still in relatively good health, but they're not moving quite as much as they used to. It's like, get in on, on doing some of this stuff today, right now, so that it's, you are maintaining and keeping, and you're not trying to unearth or bring back what you've lost. Um, I have another couple of good quotes. I really, I, I'm a huge quote guy. Again, I am probably the dumbest guy in the room when I'm in a room of like 30 or more people. So I really love to use other people's language because it's way better than my own. This is from a neurologist and an author, Oliver Sacks. He said this, he said, much more of the brain is devoted to movement than to language. Language is, the, is only a little thing sitting on top of this huge ocean of movement. Our brain is specifically designed for movement. And I, 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 if there's one big takeaway from everybody, that's what I want them to know is like when we see cognitive decline, physical decline, all those things, that it all comes down to movement of the body. Sitting in a chair, sitting idle, it's not what we're here for. Look at a baby, look at a child. When are they, when are they not moving? When they're sleeping. Right. And even then they're moving. <laughs> we, we need to move, but we need to move smart and we need to move 
uh, specific when it comes to the, it's why I designed the program the way I did. It's with very um, thoughtful mo movement patterns, you know, uh, rotation, uh, single leg, uh, moving with rotation, going from low to high, transfer of weight, your center of gravity from one side to the other. It's like, there's, it's again, it's very simplistic stuff. Things that we do in our day-to-day -day living, you know, going to the grocery store, getting up off the toilet, getting in and out of our car. These are, these are movements that we need to incorporate into like practiced movement. Excellent. I love it. Um, so can you share with people where they can find the program, the name of the program, how to get access, all that sort of stuff, as well as your podcast and all your social media? Yeah, absolutely. Well, here, I'll start with the podcast just because it's, it's evident on my shirt and on, on the wall behind me, right? Strong by Design is the name of our podcast show. Uh, we, it, Wade's been on it. If you dig back uh, to, geez, I don't know what episode it would have been. It would have been earlier on, like in the 30s or 40s, probably of our show. Yeah, like the first season or so. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it, it was great. It was a great conversation, actually. And we've We've talked, we've talked uh, other times too over the years about uh, various things with with what you've done with bioptimizers, which is so fun. But for people who want to uh, go to a link, the best place to go is neurobalancetherapy.org/main. Neurobalancetherapy.org/main. So neuro is N-E-U-R-O. Balancetherapy.org slash main and there is a uh, a video to watch if you don't want to watch the video go to click away and you can just read the transcript so sometimes people they want to just kind of get like i want to just read about this i don't want to watch a video and that's fine if you want to just read it's all right there for you a lot of great information there it tells you about me about the program about the creation story why i did it um and um i just again it's from a a place of of really trying to help uh, people who I have great respect for, which is uh, our older men and women, right? All these great, amazing people that helped create us, right? Our, our grandparents, our parents, and people that uh, need to have their independence, need to be able to live their best lives. And that's really where this, this comes from. This isn't a special pill that you pop. This is something that you can do very simple uh, in your, in your own home, anywhere that you are. And when you, when it's practice and done consistently, it will absolutely lead to some improvement in day-to-day -day living, uh, when, when it comes to how you feel, how your movement and, and how balanced you are. Chris, you're a man on a mission, and this is a great mission to be on. Yeah. Yeah joining us today on the podcast and oh, it's, it's a blessing man it's an absolute blessing i thank you so much for for and hey we get to do this again you're going to be on our show oh that's awesome i can't wait <laughs> looking forward to it so for all our listeners uh if you or someone you know um is struggling with movement they're getting older and stuff check out chris's program we got all the links here in the show notes so that you can jump on take advantage of it chris has worked and advocated with the best of the best and he's advocated programs that actually work and there's a lot of reasons why so many people has followed their program over the years is because they're always innovating they're always improving and it's coming from a place of love and empathy and that's one of the things that we resonate the most with so thank you so much for joining us today we'll see you on the next edition of the awesome health podcast i'm way t lightheart for bioptimizers have yourself an awesome day <laughs>